Ladies and gentlemen, to good morning. Roy Lascott and joining me, David Jennings, to preview a stellar day one of action at Ascot is Paul Keeley, Johnny Deneen, Matt Williams and Ali Vans from our sponsors, Paddy Power, where we will be giving away half a million quid throughout the course of the week. Yes, 100 grand up for grabs today in Finders Keepers. More about that in one moment. But Paul Keeley, welcome to Ascot Week. Thanks, mate. Really looking forward to it. Fantastic first day card. Had a fair bit of rain this morning, almost 10 mil. Uh, no ground update yet. Coming at midday, apparently, they'll be, they'll be taking a go and stick reading sometime about 11. There's a dry day forecast, and we've got six hours for it to dry out, so I doubt it will make a huge amount of difference. And I have to say, Kiels, that is a beautiful new shirt you've got, nicely ironed and everything. I did and iron it at five o'clock this morning, actually, funnily enough, yeah. it's, but it's nowhere near new. Yeah, and it just, it just I have to say, you look, you look remarkably well, <laughs> unlike uh, the person sitting directly <laughs> to your left, who didn't quite get the memo about how formal and sophisticated this show is. Uh, Mr. Johnny Deneen, yeah. you're auditioning for Love Island there, are you? I, I, I just wanted to do a Wimbledon effect that was going to happen. But anyway, look, I'm here anyway, and it's you're, l- less than You are here. <laughs> In all your it's glory. It's fierce warm here anyway. I, I, look, I, I, I didn't, didn't e- think we'd quite see so much of you, but you're here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect it to, to, be, to, uh, have to be quite as well dressed, but um, as I said, I'm here anyway. It's all I can do for you now well, at this stage. To be honest, Johnny, most people are tuning in to listen to you, not to look at you. I know. That, that helps. Just, How yeah. big is Royal Ascot for you and your, your professional punter? How big is Royal Ascot? It's not the biggest bit me, me of the year for me because I, I much prefer the jumps, to be honest. But I will bet an Ascot, and, I, and, and I'll have like. Probably many five five days. I'll definitely have ten bets here anyway. You know mm. what I mean? But uh, they're like, I don't predominantly play in many sprints. To be honest, the five six following races, I hardly ever play in them. Now I will play in the, the Coventry Stakes today, but the, the longer the races, I, I prefer the bigger the races. The, the longer races, the flat, I much prefer betting on rather than the shorter ones. And so of course, we have got Johnny Deneen in because you're a brilliant judge, and of course, he's a star of up in the ante, the star of up in the ante. But there was also a little bit of a Twitter spat, yes, a couple of days ago. So we'll, we'll hear more about that in a moment. But Johnny has a very keen fancy in the Coventry Stakes, let me tell you. Matt Williams, it's a pleasure to be in the company of a hero like yourself. And you too, mate. And you too. Yeah, looking forward to this week. You'll be a belter. Yeah, I've and missed that uh, Scouse accent. So well, I yeah, well, it's, it's unmistakable, isn't it? Yeah, it is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I feel a bit overdressed. overdressed <laughs> you know, <'cause> I <laughs> couldn't believe it when you walked in with, with the Irish fan. <laughs> <laughs> so the last time we spoke to you, obviously, was at Cheltenham. Yeah. You almost had a Cheltenham Festival winner with Love Envoy. Yeah. I was, I was happy for it to come second. Yeah, you, actually. you helped the fairy tale. Yeah, yeah. It was brilliant, brilliant race. Um, maybe get back there next year. Have another go and we won't have one in to beat. Absolutely. You know. Ali Vance, thanks for joining us. Now, this is a big week for Paddy Power. We are giving away so much money. Uh, tell us all about Finders L- Keepers. Yeah, let me tell you all the details. Yeah, every day this week for Royal Ascot, Paddy Power giving 20 lucky people 5,000 quid each, 5,000 euros or pounds. Um, there is no catch. All you have to do is log on to your Paddy Power account and withdraw the money. If you don't withdraw the money, you lose it. So £5,000 could be in your account, so you need to log in. There's going to be two drops of 10 names uh, this morning, so we will start the timer now. So you've got 15 minutes. Log into your Paddy Power account and you could be one of the 10 lucky people in this first drop to have an extra 5,000 quid in your, in your account. All you have to do is withdraw that cash and happy days. Absolutely. Get your phone out. Log in. What harm? It only takes a few seconds. You could have a couple of thousand quid in your account. So log into your account. Just to let you know what else is coming up on today's show. Of course, we're going to preview all the racing. We're going to get the naps from our panel here as well. And we've also got a new feature called The Race, where Johnny Deneen will be racing Paul Keeley. Yes, stay tuned for that. Johnny Deneen will be racing Paul Keeley. That's why he's got shorts on. Yeah. <laughs> and your rolls in. How'd you bet, DJ? I'd make, I'd make Johnny a slight favourite, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. A, sh- a shade of odds on it. Seven on me, <laughs> uh, So we've heard what our panel think of Royal Ascot, but what do the people of New York think of Royal Ascot? The Americans know about horse racing. Okay, Spider-Man, do you prefer Royal Ascot or the Breeders' Cup? Uh, the Breeders' Cup? The Breeders' Cup. The Breeders' Cup. Royal what? A cup. Royal Ascot sounds fancy. Can you tell me how many furlongs are in a mile? Ah, 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 ah. How many furlongs are in a mile? Uh, 12. Ooh, 12. I would say like four or five. I would say since it's called furlongs and not fur shorts, I would say short number like five. 
Do you know what Swinley Bottom is? I have no idea what Swinley Bottom is. Me neither. Frankel or Frankel. See the Stars? Season, season Star? Frankel or See the Stars? I mean, See the Stars sounds better. See the Stars. Because of his three-year-old campaign? Of course. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. It's so ambitious, wasn't it? Yeah, I okay. mean, it was, it was innovative, really, is what it really, was. Well, it really was, it really was. And, you know, kudos to John Ox for that. I'm going to ask you some names. You tell me if you know these people. Do you know Frankie Dettori? No. Do you know uh, Ruby Walsh? Yeah, Joe Walsh's brother. Ruby Walsh? No. Fran Berry? That sounds more familiar. He'll be very happy to hear that. Fran Berry. Uh, wait, that sounds familiar. Fran Berry? Not right now, thank God. I don't know who Ruby Walsh is. Maybe. Okay. What about Fran Berry? Um, basketball. Basketball, correct. Have you ever heard of Frankie Dettori? No. Have you ever heard of Ruby Walsh? Sounds like somebody that makes some juice. I was going to say jelly. No. Ruby no. Walsh. Yeah, juice, juice and jelly. Juice. Ruby Walsh, pineapple and orange. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Ah, Ruby Wells! Ruby Wells! Ruby, you made that drink, I'll let you ball. Patty Power. Katy Perry? Patty Power. Heidi Power? Patty Power. Nah, nah. Uh, do you prefer the Ascot Gold Cup or the Cheltenham Gold Cup? Ascot Dog. Cheltenham. Oh, jumps and, jumps and flat fans. You know, it's, 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 the, it's the beauty of racing. It's the beauty of racing. Do you know, why do they ring a bell when they turn for home at Royal Ascot? Yeah, I got to let you know. It's the final, it's the last round. So it's exciting. You're, ding, ding. And yeah. you, the people know and then, you know. You're right. Ted Lasso or Ted Walsh? Uh, as a cowboy, I like a lasso. Do you prefer uh, Ted Walsh or Ted Lasso? Uh, Ted Walsh. Ted Walsh has just retired. Do you not miss him? No. I mean, I miss him a little bit, but you know what I'm saying? I, he, he go ahead and do what he got to do. Right. He got the money. <laughs> he yeah, got the out. money. But I go with Ted Walsh. He sounds more Ted solid. Yeah. Yeah. He's, just, he's got great views on racing, hasn't he? I mean, just on account of knowing Ted Lasso and not knowing Ted Walsh, I'm just going to go with Ted Lasso. <laughs> Ted Walsh has just retired. You've got some cheek. You've got some cheek. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. Happy retirement, Ted. There you go, Ted Walsh. <laughs>
That'd be a great price. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd probably slap your hand off. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, look, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be dogmatic. Either. Modern game is a very admirable horse, even though he's a, he, he's not a top top horse. But maybe Inspirited is indeed a native trail. Has a small bit to prove after after like his farms after tapering off a bit. If you force me up against the wall, I think I'd pick Modern Games. You wouldn't want much rain, though. I'd say at the same time. Mm. Look, it, it's a race. I don't see the bookies getting a good start. I, I don't see a result in it. But I might leave it off now. There's, there might be better bets later on in the day. Okay, maybe in just over half an hour's time exactly, after yeah. that for half a set in the Coventry Stakes. Right, Keels, the lads are kind of lukewarm going into the opener. Are you going to kick yeah, off with a bang? It's one of those. The, you can understand the prices. Inspiral might be the best. Might well be the best for you in the race. I mean, Frankie Detour is riding some woefully underpriced horses today, but Inspiral probably isn't one mm. of them. But she does have, you know, you've got to trust her, haven't you? Because she did get chinned at six on once last year. She did flop out the stalls in the QE2, so I wouldn't back her. Modern Games, it depends on how much that rain has done, really, because he doesn't want any soft in the going. It's 10 mil, there's six hours for it to dry, so it probably won't be, wor it probably won't be worse than good. But Native Trail on his best form last year, he is right up there with him. He's a three-time Group 1 winner, isn't he? Like, you know, almost won an Eclipse. So he's right up there and he'll stay the stiff mile very well. And Light Infantry last year got beaten neck by Inspiral and he's 10 times the price. And mm -hmm. he got beaten neck, short neck, in a group one last time pre disbrandt uh, Again, finishing well as he tends to. Uh, the stiff mile here, a finisher. Jamie Spencer, one of the best riders ever on Ascot straight track. Each way 20 to 1, that's what I've done. Okay, there you go, Light Infantry. Keels, 20 to 1 at the moment. I'm an Inspiral fan. I know. The break is all important, but I, I just think talent-wise, she's the most talented horse in the race, male or female. So final selections. Ali, have you got a fancy in the Queen Anne? Modern games for me. I think he sets the benchmark. He's so consistent. He's only finished out of the top three in um, two starts of his 15 races. Five-time Group 1 winner, so he's, he's mine of those top three. Excellent. So there you go, folks. Those are our selections up on your screen. It's Inspiral for me. It's life, Light Infantry each way for Keels. And it is Modern Games for Johnny Deneen and Native Trail for Matt Williams. So moving on to what is, of course, the big Twitter race of the day. It is the Coventry Stakes. It is the Clock Watchers against the Eye Watchers. It is Johnny Deneen versus Simon Rowlands and James Knight. It is off at 3.05. It's a race not to be missed. River Tiber is currently our 15 to 8 favourite. A sad and now into 9 to 4. Johnny Deneen, you told me on Saturday this horse will be at least 4 to 1. Give me the beat, boys. Four to one, but on the drift, much bigger on the exchanges, and it is eleven to one bar. Okay, let's go back to uh, let's go back to the start of this um, this uh, Twitter gate, uh, Johnny Deneen. Uh, yourself and Simon disagree over a Sadna. Uh, you tell me why this horse can't win. Well, look, I, I was never into times as such, but I, I, like, I'm not dismissing anyone or whatever. Like, people do things different differently. Do you know what I mean? I'd be more like dealing with people, speaking to people, doing my own thing. I never got involved in, t in times much. Probably because of that, a lot of stuff I do is National Hunters, where the times are even less irrelevant, anyway, if, mm. if anything. Look, I, I'm, not, I'm not dismissing out of hand anyone that does time, but they're not for me. That's basically it. The reason I don't fancy it, I'll give you two reasons why I don't fancy a Sadna. Just two, okay. Yeah, I'll give you two. Two of the main ones I don't fancy him. First of all, anyway, it's a stable that knows the time of day, okay? So they did not send Pegasus to Ripon and leave him go off 9 to 2. Do you know what I mean? They didn't, it, like, they send a horse from Newmarket to Ripon and not back him. Like, he, leaving that yard anyway, they, they couldn't envisage him. Okay, to on that point, him. can I play devil's yeah. advocate? There are so many horses who are different horses when they get to the track to what they do at home. Yeah, so I, many. I, I get that point. I get that point. He was a breezer as well when he still did have him a few weeks. Do you know what I mean? So the thing, he wouldn't have done a whole lot with him. Yeah, I, I get that point. Uh -oh. but, 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 but horses that win at big odds. I would always be, a, 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 I'd be always sceptical of them when they, when they run at short odds in, on their next appearance, if you know what I'm saying. Okay. And the second thing, uh, horses are, are, are creatures like greyhounds. Okay, you, you, you get a greyhound that'll run, it, it'll come to it in, in a pups race, okay? Okay. And he'll do a ferocious time in a pups race. You put him in against race dogs, okay, in, 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 in another race, so, with, with other five dogs I'm talking about now, that are 50 spots lower than him, he won't beat them on his next run. They, uh, animals can do times when, when they're not under huge pressure. That's my reading of it anyway. Before we come to who you do fancy in the race, Johnny, we've got some names, Ali. Yeah, sorry to interrupt the big debate. Yes, if you are one of these people in these cities, then you better log into your Paddy Power account because you've only got three minutes 30 to do it to claim that 5,000 quid. Singer and Skibbereen, 
uh, Timmy in Canturk, John in Cork, Jackie in Dublin, Jessica in Liverpool, Jade in Eastbourne, Stephen in Dundee, Joseph in Cheshunt and Siobhan in Dundee and Adam in Nace. Log into your Paddy Power account. You've got 5,000 quid in there. You have to withdraw it if you want to keep it. They weren't too helpful to, to you there, Ali. A bit of alliteration. Sintija in Skibbereen. Yeah. That's, <laughs> so that's a tongue twister. John, Jackie, Jessica, Jade sound like a great band as yeah. well. <laughs> the Fab Four yeah. and Paddy Power's Finders Keepers. So log into your account. Look at your name. If that's your name, if that's where you live, log into your account. Take out the money. You might as well have it as Paddy having it. He's enough, really, doesn't he? Right. Johnny, you've told us why you're sad and I can't win. Tell us what's going to win. Well, I fancy River Tiber. I don't care what, how good a sad it is anyway. I think River Tiber is a proper, proper race horse. A, a definitely a group one horse, a top group one horse. And I don't care how good a sad it is. I'm in River Tiber camp anyway. And if it's sad and it comes to beat them, fair enough. That's it. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'll be in River Tiber's camp. Win or lose, that'll be it. That's, that's from River one. He'll be one I'll go with anyway, definitely. How will you feel if it's Adna wins? Oh, listen, I'll be, I'll be feeling wh what time is the next race. That's it, basically. Like It's, it's, it's just another race for me. Yeah. I mean, listen, if I get a bit of abuse about it, so what? I don't care. It's, it's the money I'll be more worried about than, <laughs> than, 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 than getting a bit of stick off of it. I mean, I can handle the stick, no problem. <laughs> um, obviously, uh, open the anti viewers will know that you got a lot right at Chetland, but one horse you did get wrong was, was Honeysuckle. Yeah, of course, yeah so, yeah. so this could potentially be another like, Honeysuckle. If I got everything right, I'd be able to bet with no one. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you'd be able to buy a pair of trousers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Look, no one gets it right all the time. Maybe, maybe speed men or whatever they think they're doing. Look, I do play Some of them would dispute that now. Yeah. Some of them are never wrong. <laughs> yeah. Look, my, my, my kind of style of gambling is like a bit like the 4 4 2 and the big men up front busting in over the line. You know what I mean? Whereas these guys nowadays want to play with like Pep Guardiola. And if you're not embracing <laughs> speed figures, you're doing it wrong. You know what I mean? Whereas I want to lump it into the box, do you know what I mean? There's no playing out from the back, any that kind of stuff. We're all lumping, kicking, and bustling in. His and in if he can get into net happy out, I'm not too pushed about how we do it. So it's Paul McGrath to Niall Quinn, goal, yeah. River Tiber it's the wins. The goalie to, to Niall Quinn, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Aki Bonner <laughs> to Niall Quinn, goal, River Tiber wins the Coventry. Right, Keels, is he right? He might be. Um, I'm not dismissive of a sadness at all, but I think that they both run very, very high level. And River Tiber has done it at five furlongs. Well, everything about him says he's going to get, he's going to want further and be better over further. And uh, yeah, I, I, he's he's the one of the two at, at, at those prices anyway. I, I would certainly favour him. Uh, Give me the beat, boys. Is an awful price. Awful on price. what he's done so far. Terrible price. Like has a chance. Has a chance. Yeah, of course it has a chance. Yeah, but, but should be know, ten to you know, one. The Frankie, you know, without Frankie on it, it's ten to one. And it's a bit like some of the other ones later on the on the day. With the rain that's come, I'm half interest, uh, interested in Bucanero Fuerte, who, who I thought well was well pronounced. I thought was uh, is it? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that was very stylish. Uh, I I think he, I think it was very impressive uh, when he won first time out. Now, that was very soft ground, and he is a brother to a, an Abbey winner on. on heavy ground in Woody. Uh, but his other brother was Beat Le Bon, who won a, who won a golden mm. mile at Goodwood on very fast ground. But trainer today says he'd want a bit of, he'd want a bit of ease. So if it's got into the ground, I think he'll run a decent race. And he's another son of Wooten Bassett like River Tiber. Absolutely. And interesting, read Adrian Murray's quotes in the, in the Racing Post today. Uh, the more rain, the better for Bocanero Fuerte. I think that's well you pronounce it better than me, Keels. Matty. River Tiber, Asadna, or a somebody else? It's a great race of an opinion in this one, and I'm, I'm strong on River Tiber. I like Asadna, I thought what he did at Ripon was spectacular, but Ripon forms like Chepstow form, I can't have it. You know, it's ridgy track, you know, the, the distances are exaggerated. I just think River Tiber's solid. Um, he's going to step up to six furlongs for the first time today. Stiff track, Ryan Moore, you know, just everything about him ticks all the boxes. Absolutely, I completely agree. So three votes for River Tiber in the Coventry Stakes at 3.05. You can't miss it. You can't miss it. It's going to be the most interesting race of the day, I think, going forward. There you see our selections on the screen. And Keels, you're down for River Tiber there now. Yes. Yeah. So it's a unanimous vote in the Coventry for Aidan O'Brien's River Tiber. Moving on to the Fast and Furious King Stand Stakes at 3.40 and Highfield Prince Princess is 5-2, to two. Cool Nagat is 130, Manikan is 5-1 to one, and it is 15-2 to two dramatised and 11-1 to one bar. 5-2 to two Highfield Princess kills. It's very, very short. Surely you'll be taking Highfield Princess very, on. Very you very never short. bag 5-2 to two very, shots. Very short. She should be 5-4. Uh, <laughs> you know, 5-2 is a ridiculous price about her, honestly. Uh, it's unbelievable. She's miles better. When Manakan is five to one, and guess who rides that? I mean, that you know, 
you know, he's rated 111 or something. Uh, you know, she's give, giving giving her three pounds. She's rated 119. She's about nine pound clear on most of those ratings, you know. All right? When she won a Nunthorpe last year, she went an RPR of 125. All right? Now, if you're giving her three pound, you got to run to 129 to beat her if she if she runs to that level again. All right? The only, there's only two horses done that over five furlongs in Britain since 2009. Batash and Nature Strip. No, show me the Batash and Nature Strip, Nature Strip in there. They just don't exist. She came out um, first time this season. That was an absolute blinding run under a five pound penalty. It just get beaten. Uh, Aspen's is a rubbish for kill. Yeah, but she isn't. No, that's she's the whole point. She she, she isn't. And she she's she isn't weird. unbeaten. Is she still? She has no, been she beaten. Of course she's been beaten. But last last summer, three great ones on the on the spin. Five furlong to six and a half furlong. Good firm to soft ground. She win. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So five to two is value. Take That's it now with Paddy Barrett. It's crazy value. I cannot believe she hasn't shortened. Have you backed her yet? I don't know what I'm seeing. Yeah, of course I have. Yeah. Okay, Maddie, you're 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 kind of lukewarm on her, are you? I'm not. It's not. I, I can see where Kiel's is coming from with it, but I just think I just don't like our sprinters. Even though I, th I mean I'm good, I like Manacan for this race, but not five to one. Yeah. He should he should be double those odds. Mm -hmm. That's a really that's a really bad value. But yeah, I fancied him last year for this race when he went on a tear in the autumn. But now five to one, it's just a ludicrous price. I still end up backing them. That's the problem. Do you know what I mean? I just, You're not price sensitive, man. It. Not massively so. I'm not. I'm the same as Johnny as well. I'm not clock sensitive either. Uh, but yeah, price sensitive. If, if I've got to have a bet in the race. I'll, he's the one I fancied last year. I didn't back him anti post. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll have to have a bet on him. Yeah. So it's and Mitt Barry as well. I think that'll run a big race. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's it's one of these races, Johnny Deneen, where where if the favourite doesn't win, it is quite open, isn't it? Look, if, if I was making a book in Ascot, I'd be having a go in a race like this. You know what I mean? That would mm. be, be the way I was always thinking anyway. Five furlongs, I always thought you had a chance of getting a, a kind of a, a wangaroo kind of a thing winning. You know what I mean? So wangaroo? Uh, yeah, well, like an outsider, that's what we call it. An outsider, wangaroo. Wangaroo, wangaroo yeah. Okay. Um, but but listen, I, I expect the boys, but they, they fancy I don't have a huge opinion here now, to be honest. I, I have no opinion really as such. But Paul puts up a good case for Highfield Princess. I think if he was... Salesman coming to the door, you nearly buy him off him, wouldn't you? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> if he was knocking on the door, <laughs> selling chairs and all. Look, I, I won't be surprised if she won. I won't be surprised if won that race. I, I mean, I know nothing about cool the gatter, so how can I have a bet? It's 7 to 2. Never heard of the horse in my life until about four days ago. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> I can't have a bet in this race, no matter what. But look, I won't be surprised if I won it. But if I was a bookie, I would have a go in a race like this. I'd be hoping for a, a 20 or 25 to 1 chance. OK, there we go. That's the King's Sand Stakes. Ali, did we have any winners? We had no winners. Um, but just sorry, I'm going to just pick Lazy up on the King's Sand Stakes. Because okay. you guys are saying there's no, the British sprinters aren't any good. And we've got some really good international horses, Coolangatta. But Twilight Gleaming for me, who I think Wesley Ward is going to have a fantastic week. Sorry to, to deviate from finest keepers, but Wesley Ward's got a great team this year. And I think Twilight Gleaming at a big price in the King's Stand. Um, but we had no winners in that first drop of 10 names. You will, though, find 500 quid in your account. So that's all good news. But our next drop of 10 names is going to start now. So you've got 15 minutes to log into your Paddy Power account. You'll find 5,000 quid in there. And to keep that 5,000 quid, you have to withdraw the money. So log into your account. And if you find 5,000 quid, then you are one of those lucky winners. Withdraw it to keep it. I think we have a better chance here, Ali. I think most people are kind of, they might be in a bed at the start, you know, they're getting up, it's lashing rain. I think nine o'clock now, we have a better chance. It's Royal Ascot day one. What are you not doing? If, what are you doing if you're not looking in your Absolutely. Your Let, account? Let's get a winner. Let's log into your Paddy Power accounts and let's try and win some cash. So there you see our selections for the King Stand Stakes up on the screen. I, I'm a Bradsell fan because I think if you take out Highfield Princess, this is a wide open race. They're all much of much as I don't think they're great. Bradsell has never ran over five, but I think he's quick. One last year's Coventry. I thought his first run back was really eye-catching. Didn't really produce the goods last time in, in the sandy lane behind Little Big Bear, but back over five, I just thought at 33s or 28s as it is now. I thought Bradsell was a little bit of value. Moving on to the 420 at Royal Ascot, it is the St. James's Palace Stakes. It is the Irish Guineas winner against the English Guineas winner. But what does Paddy Power's Ruby Walsh think? St. James's Palace. It's Ruby, the Irish 2000 Guineas winner versus the English 2000 Guineas winner. They haven't met before. Um, look, Chaldean did nothing wrong as a two year old. He won the Dewhurst when all was at, at the end of the season. Paddington had a much, he wasn't as good a two year old, but as, as a three year old, Paddington has absolutely prospered. And um, I was really impressed with him at the Curra when he beat Cairo. I thought he was in control of the race from a long way out. High Royal, who had been placed behind Chaldean at Newmarket, was behind him. There was, was a length further behind Paddington than he was Chaldean. 
and I was with Paddington at the Curra, and I'm going to be with him again at Ascot. Did I spot a cameo appearance from you in there? Uh, yes, there was a shiny head somewhere there. Yeah. <laughs> Your acting career is going from strength to strength, Keel, so it is. As long as I don't have to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so the St. James's Palace Stakes is off at 4.20, and what a corker it is, ladies and gentlemen. Chaldean, Chaldean. Are we going with Chaldean or Chaldean? Chaldean, I think. Chaldean, yeah. so we're just forgetting about the H. I yeah. was told the other day it was Chaldean, but I can't stop calling him Chaldean anyway. Okay. So. so it's Chaldean who, the rain has come in time for his current year. Six to four, favourite now, buddy. Paddy Power, 5-2 Paddington. It is 15-2 Isaac Shelby. Uh, Cicero's Gift is 9-1 and it is 10-1 Royal Scotsman, 11-1 Bar. So Caldean Keels is kind of one of these horses, not judging by the price now because he's been well backed, he's in 6-4, but he's one of these horses that every time he wins people say, ah, it wasn't a great Dewhurst. Ah, the rain came and, you know, Little Big Bear and, and Augusta Rodin didn't run their races in the guineas. Every time he wins... There seems to be a little bit of the gloss taken off it. Is he a proper top-notch Group 1 horse? Is he the best three-year-old miler around? A, I think he's a proper Group 1 horse. I don't think there's much doubt about that. He's, and he's a very good horse. And, you know, you can you can crab bits of the form if you want, but he does keep putting his head in front, doesn't he? I mean, you, you can't... I don't think you can argue with that. I think he'll... You know, I think he's a horse to beat. Uh, I think Frankie will have to make the running uh, from stall one because he would be in danger of getting, uh, uh, getting boxed off otherwise, won't he? Um, but uh, it's interesting. I don't think they set a massive standard. That's the only thing. I don't think I don't think there's an absolute standout in the race. You can understand the money coming for Isaac Shelby because the round course was uh, good in places before the ten mil. So that, that often rides a lot a fair bit slower than the straight course anyway. So there almost certainly will be a bit of ease uh, in the ground there. So you can understand why he's second favourite. Why Mustabshi was dr drifted out because he doesn't want it soft. Uh, but I still, you know, I'm going to give another chance to Royal Scotsman. Are you? Yeah. I mean, look, he was six to four to win the Irish Guineas. You're very forgiven. Right. Why was he six to four to win the Irish Guineas? Because he, he was such an eye catcher when he ran in that Guineas when he was third to, to Caldine because uh, he was on the wrong side. He was he was way too keen early. He really did pick up when he got asked to bring it. He flattened out. He might Does he not stay? Be, he might not be a true miler. I, I, I have to admit that. But if he settles here, he has got a change of gear. And you read the comment in the Racing Post today from, from Paul Cole. They really love him. They adore him. They really him. love him. Mm. He's a, you know, he, he, he said, we're, we're expecting a big, big run. He's a very, very good horse. Like, you know, so I think he did an interview with Matt Chapman there recently where he basically said, this horse can do anything. Yeah. And like he's seen a good horse. He knows good he horses. Changed, generous, generous, didn't he? Mm. You know what I mean? So you know, he knows the horse is a, a good horse. Uh, whether the rain is any good for him on a stiff track like Ascot, you, you do worry a little bit. I'll give you that, but I still think he's a value. He'd have been, it'd, it'd be four to one for this if he hadn't run at the car. Yeah, he's one of those Royal Scotsmen. If he does win, we'll all be like, oh, you know, we'll be kicking ourselves. We did see the run in the Guineas. Uh, I have a feeling, Johnny, you're going to take on Caldean here. No, no, no. Oh, no. No, 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 far from it. In fact, oh. I, I think it's a bank, bank two horse race. The, the, the best two horse race of the meeting. I think any, the rest of them have absolutely zero chance. Would there be a million? They'd be close enough to it, yeah. Would they? Okay. They would, combined, yeah. Um, I, I, I think part is where you might probably have to make the running on off trap one, Caldean, because they're more grinding horses, both of them, Caldean and Paddington, and they won't want to set it up for a horse with a, a blind and turn of foot that might sweep by him in, in 100 yards, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So they're going to have to make it a good test. And I'd say it will be a good test. So anything with, with, with doubtful stamina is going to be found out here. I was going to back, originally I was going to back Caldean and Save and Paddington. Then I was going to back Paddington, Save and Caldean. Level <laughs> <laughs> stakes. No, now that I have, I've missed the prize, Caldean, and I should have backed it because I had a feeling with the models, they've, they milled it in, 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 in new markets. Yes. They kind, they're, they're inclined to back the same horses over and over. And they were against Paddington in, 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 in the Curra. He went from about 5 to 4 to 4 to 1. Mm. So I partly guessed it would be against that again. So I should have taken the 9 to 4. Now at the prices now, I might even finish up back in Paddington and save in Caldean. 
but I'm not sure. I, I can see this race, Caldean being in front, Paddington going through in second, and I, I can't see Etnils get into race, and it'd be a question of whether Paddington will pass Caldean or not. You mentioned models there. For, for viewers of Good Morning Oil Ascot, they mightn't have a clue what you're talking about. Just explain what you're talking about, about models. These are these uh, algorithm models that, that, that drive the markets, and they tend to back the same horses. I've noticed that over now. It's very hard to predict what they will back, but if they do back a horse stick and it wins especially, they'll back it again and again and again. They used to do that with Apple's Jade a lot. Every time Apple's Jade was ran, regardless of whether yeah. it was going well at home ran, they put it away anyway, you know what I mean? And they've obviously done the same with Caldine, and they, they maybe they don't like Paddington. When the time comes, I'm not sure what way I'll go, but I'll be into the two of them big anyway. Okay. Will it be money for... For marmalade for uh, Paddington? I had no, to get I, that in there. Yeah, no, money for jam, money for marmalade? Yeah, I get it. See what I, I did there? I, I get it, I get it. <laughs> you didn't I laugh, did, though. Well, it wasn't that funny. <laughs> 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 Can't laugh with the same All right, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> but Caldean, I think Frank will get it out in front, and that's the way he's got to ride this horse. You know, Paddington, he's, a, he's got to be a middle distance, so he's got to be a man and a quarter horse. If Frank can get out, stack them up, no better man round Ascot, no better front running jockey. I think he, I think he'll do the business. Though. I agree. But he's got to get out. I agree. You mightn't like my jokes, but I agree no, with I your. I love tip. your jokes normally, mate. <laughs> yeah, that was early. just pure. I know. <laughs> Ali, we I'm have with, got some Paul, locations. I'm with Paul Keeley at a big price, Royal Scotsman. Okay. Yes, we have locations: uh, Milton Keynes, Thatcham, Luton, Coatbridge, Manchester, Rafoe, Wrexham, Tralee, Trim, and Navan. If you're in one of those places, check your Paddy Power account. You could have five thousand quid in there. You have to withdraw it within the next ten minutes, or you will lose it. So. Go and log on to Paddy Power if you're watching this. You, you got your case in there very quickly I for Royal Scotsman, so you must really fancy it. No, uh, just I like to have an opinion on m most things. <laughs> no, I just think at a price, I think as, as Paul said, he was six to four the last time he ran. At the price, they obviously really like him. They, and I think he's, he's the value here. Double figure price at the moment, Royal Scotsman, 10 to one. We kind of had two votes on the panel now for Royal Scotsman at 10 to one. It's Caldine for myself, Johnny and Matt Williams. And now, folks, it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> this is it. This is the race. This is Paul Keeley versus Johnny Deneen. <laughs> so, I am Bradley Walsh. Well, I try, obviously not with the jokes I've, mm -hmm. I've recently come up with, but I am Bradley Walsh. So it is Johnny Deneen versus Paul Keeley, okay? So Johnny, you have to answer as many questions as you can in 90 seconds, okay? And then Keels is going to try and catch it, okay? All right, I've never so seen this deformed before. Yeah, have no. you ever seen The Chase before? <laughs> the, the game show The Chase, no? The last time I saw Bradley Walsh, he was in Coronation Street. Was he, some, was he, no? was he in EastEnders? Was he in some of that, no? Was he? Could be one of the questions, Johnny. Who oh, knows? Sorry, okay, you ready now? Look smart, okay? Come on. Right. Get, get, get your act together here now, right? Okay. okay. So you have to answer as many questions as you can in 90 seconds. They better okay? be easy now. So the pressure is on, well, they're, 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 they're questions, okay? okay so ahead. Ali, you're going to be our timekeeper, yep. okay? The minute I start the first question, Johnny has 90 seconds, okay? <laughs> so here we go. Johnny Deneen, your first question starts now. Who is the current Prime Minister of the United Kingdom? Sunak. Who won, last, who won this year's Supreme Novice Hurdle at Cheltenham? Ah, Johnny oh. Supreme Novice Hurdle. Come Marie on. National. Two out of two. Name me any actor who played James Bond. Connery. Who writes the blog called Sectional Spotlight for At, at the Races? <laughs> Rollins. <laughs> Simon Rollins. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Adrian Dunbar plays what character in Line of Duty? The, the guard, the big... The, the no, we need names. We need names. Oh, I don't know his name. Um, I know him, yeah. I know the you know, oh, yeah. Watch, yeah. Pass, pass. That'll, that'll Ooh, do, will pass. it? I know his name, yeah, that'll do. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's Ted Hastings. Oh, so Ted, it is. Yeah, Ted yeah, Hastings. Yeah, yeah. What is 14 multiplied by 12? 168. <laughs> that was quick. Oh, Holy oh, God. Oh, oh. What horse won last year's Queen Anne at Royal Ascot? I've no idea. You've no idea? No. Pass? Pass, yeah. By Eid. Uh, in what country was the film In Bruges made? Belgium. Very good, Johnny. Who is the new manager of Chelsea? Um, Pochettino. Very good. How many times has Ryan Moore been leading rider at Royal Ascot? Oh, I'm guessing five. Nine. Yeah. What age is Frankie de Tory? 52. Very good. Who is the current host Ten of seconds. Love Island? Oh, I have no idea. No, no idea? Pass, pass. Pass, yeah. pass, okay. Who is the manager of the England soccer team? Southgate. Uh, who won the 20... Stop. 16 to 1 on Deneen. 
<laughs> I'll have some of that. <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on. Let's see how you did, okay? Okay, so who's the current host of Love Island? No. Uh, what age is Frankie Dettori? 52. That's one. Ryan Moore, no, has been a champion jockey nine times. Pochettino uh, is the new manager at Chelsea. Well done. Umbruge, Belgium. Uh, you didn't get by Eid oh one boy. last year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 14 by 12 is 168. That's four. You didn't get Ted Hastings, uh, is it, who Adrian Dunbar plays in line of duty. Who writes sectional spotlight for at the races? It is Simon Rowlands. That's five. And the actor who played James Bond, you got that. Connery is six. Uh, Marine Nationale was seven. And Richie Sunak, Rishi Sunak is eight. So you got eight, eight. Johnny. Oh my God. Yeah. How are you pricing it? Oh, he's 101. Kiel's yeah. got no yeah. chance. Kiel's got zero chance. I think on is. TV I won't, I won't have the answer yeah. to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Eight to catch, nine to win, okay? Go on. You ready? How are you feeling? Close my eyes. You ready, Ali? Mm -hmm. With the time. We've got some names first before we go into Paul Keeley's questions. We've got some, na we, some names for these locations. We've got names. If your name is on this board and you live in these towns, do check your Paddy Power account. Uh, Tata from Milton Keynes, Alison from Thatcham, Ryan from Luton, Michael from Coatbridge, Asama from Manchester, Emma from Raffo, David from Wexford, Garroy, Gar Garrod from Tralee, Ashling from Trim, <laughs> Nicola from Navin. Check your Paddy, pa Paddy Power account. You could have 5,000 quid in there. You've got to withdraw the money, though, within the next six minutes. Who's in Tralee, Ali? Garroyd. Very good. That is impressive, I have to say. There you go. So if you are one of those names and you are living in one of those locations, check your account. Come on, we need winners in Finders Keepers today. It's day one of Royal Ascot. You've got to take the catch. So Paul Keeley, eight to beat, eight to beat. The pressure is on. Can you catch Johnny Deneen? Paul Keeley, Ali, you ready? Paul Keeley, your time starts now. Who is the current president of Ireland? No idea. <laughs> the president of Ireland? <laughs> no idea. Michael D. Higgins. Who won the 2023 Grand National? Korak Rambler. Very good. Matt LeBlanc played which character in the sitcom Friends? Oh, uh, Joey. Very good, Joey Tribbiani. <laughs> what horse won last year's Prince of Wales Estates at Royal Ascot? State of Rest. Very mean. good, Paul Keeley. What is nine multiplied by 13? A hundred. I'm terrible at this. Pass. <laughs> Come on. Pass. Nine, multi nine multiplied by 13. Plus 17. Very good. Uh, who did Argentina beat in the World Cup final in 2022? Croatia. <laughs> France. Nothing about football. Who played Peggy Mitchell in EastEnders? No idea. Babs. Barbara Windsor. Never seen EastEnders. <laughs> what <laughs> is, the, Barbara Windsor, what is yeah. the capital city of Portugal? Lisbon. Very good. Who won the 2023 Paddy Power Stairs Hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival? No, no, excuse me, no, no clues from the crowd. Sire de Berlay, where is the first test in the Ashes being played? Who is the manager of the Irish soccer team? No idea. Keels, <laughs> the Irish soccer team. Ask me questions about let's, football. Let's put him out of his pain. Stephen Kenny, and one more. How many times did the Yates win the Gold Cup? Three, four. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, it, it's fair nice to say. Well done. <laughs> you didn't do it is fair to say Johnny Deneen has not been caught. Paul Keeley got six. Six? I'm yeah, quite yeah not too that. bad. It's six, yeah, not too bad. We'll, we'll, Respectable you know, it's, lucky. Ask me yeah. questions about football. It's unfair. Yeah, well, you know, you know I thought they were reasonably easy. So and six extenders. Uh, how, how did you do? Did you do better than Keels? Did you do better than Johnny Deneen? We will be back tomorrow with more of the race where we will find out if one of our guests can be. Better than Paul Keeley? Well, you're not back tomorrow, so we'll have a new, we'll have a new contestant for the race tomorrow, but we'll find out who is going to be the champion of the race. And we'll have to do this every day. Every day you've got to do it, yeah. So get, get studying, Keels, OK? Start watching Mastermind. Uh, that was the race. It's going to be back for you every day at Royal Ascot. Let's get on with the previewing of the action. At 5 o'clock, it is the Ascot Stakes, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is the banker, not just of the day, but the banker of the, meet, the meeting. Bring on the night is currently two to one. Love to see is six to one. It is seven to one. A horse with no name. Uh, novel legend is eight to one. It's nine to one. Calling the wind. Well sported. Zoffy is twelve to one. Irish lullaby fourteen to one. And zinc white is also fourteen to one. And it's sixteen to one bar. Paul Keeley. I cannot contemplate defeat for bring on the night. Was running off level weights against Coltrane last year. Coltrane is now rated nineteen pound higher. Was run off level weights because Callum Hutchinson claimed five pound. If he repeats that run in the race last year, 
surely he just goes and wins this. Yeah, you could be right. Yeah, I'm still trying to convo- compose myself, to be honest, after taking 20 seconds to multiply <laughs> nine times 13. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you could be right. Though. He was very, uh, you know, you know he, he was unlucky to run in a good horse like Coltrane last year, wasn't he? Three quarters of a lead. Coltrane's 19 pound higher, five, you know, three to one favourite or something for the, for the, for the Gold Cup. Um, so yeah, he's very much the one to beat. I can't back horses at that sort of price on the round course in 21 races at Ascot. And I just think called in the wind with, with your, your extra paces on offer. I mean, you just you cannot finish out the frame. Never has done at Ascot. Uh, has been second and third to, to uh, Stratum in the last two runners of the Queen Alexandra. Dropped a little bit down the weights now, so he's running off 99. Uh, book Billy Lochrane, take another three pound off. Um, he just cannot finish out the frame. I'd rather back him each way than be lumping on a two to one shot. Cannot finish out of the frame. That is calling the wind at nine to one, and had a very enjoyable dinner. What you, what we call in Ireland an Indian, but you guys over here call a curry yeah. curry house. Dodgy call, uh, yeah, a yeah. ruby. Couldn't believe a, a it. ruby. Yeah. yeah, we had a korma last night, and I had the pleasure of your company, Matt, and you were telling me, convincing me, that calling the wind was potentially the bet of the day. Yeah, the price is great each way, but like Keel says, uh, this rain won't have done him any harm at all. Uh, he's got a bit of a reputation as a soft ground horse, but he isn't. I think his best runs have been on good. He's had the speed to finish second in the November handicap. Stayed the trip in the Queen Alexandra um, twice, finished placed, as Keel said. Uh, I just think he's a, he's a great each way bet. Bring on the night. Sorry, DJ, but I'm against him. I think he's too short, two to one. You know, he's had a long time off. Um, I just, I think it's a trained by a genius, man. He's trained by a, a very sharp, clever trainer, yeah. But just, he's too short. What price know. should he be? Four to one. Really? Yeah. Wow. I think so. It's just, I just, it, there's a bit of an unknown about him. Mm. Uh, I don't think it's a deep race as last year. He, no. You know, so I take that, but just the time off. I think it's a big ask. Okay, so calling the wind. Now I know you're a good mate with Richard Hughes. Mm, What's the vibes him. from the camp? Confidence. He never lets him down. This horse. You know, the, the yard went through a quiet spell. For about a month or so there, you know, he, he couldn't he couldn't get one past the line. But this lad ran at Chester, he ran a great race. He was unlucky. Should definitely have finished in the frame. Um, used his forms, turned round. He's banging in the winners now. He's had a really good two weeks, and uh, the horses are flying. So this fella should should uh, at least get into a place. Before we hear he's, Johnny, he's not a big winner, but he no, he's not. No, he sh- he's a good each way bet. Okay. Before we hear Johnny Deneen's thoughts on the Ascot Stakes, Ali, have you any good news for me? No, no winners again <sighs> this morning. There will be though 500 quid in everyone's accounts that uh, names were selected. So 20 lucky people getting 500 quid, but not 5,000 quid. Um, though we will be giving away another 100,000 quid again tomorrow. So do tune in then again, 8.30 tomorrow morning for Good Morning Royal Ascot. And if you do know any of those people, if you know any of those names in any of those locations, tell them that they could have won all this money. It will make their day. They will be absolutely <laughs> sick betting on the Queen Anne on day one of Royal Ascot. Johnny, you're, you, you're, you're a Willie Mullins man. You know, Willie Mullins has won you a lot of money over the years. To be fair to say, I'd say you back more Willie Mullins horses than any other trainer. Am I right? I, look, I suppose if you, uh, he, he's, he has a lot of winners, obviously. He does, yeah. And he, and, and he has a lot of sharp prices. A lot of sharp prices, yeah. And sharp prices don't really stop me from backing him, to be no. honest. So um, will you be getting stuck in to bring I him look, I'm going to be getting stuck in. I think he'll probably win. I do, too. Uh, uh, 20 runners, 2-1. to one. As Matt says, he's off a while. I don't think that's probably a negative. I, I do know that they think he's a cert and he's been trained spe- specifically for this race. Like the f- I'd say they didn't bother running him in the winter because... Kept him solely for this ob- uh, objective. He must have had a setback, though, surely. I'd, I'd say he's, I'd say he's not really a, a hurdle horse, mate. To be honest, yeah, do you know what I mean? I, I, I'd say that he, he was, he was going to be, it was out of novice company. Um, what was he going to do? He wasn't going to be a champion hurdle horse or anything mm. like that. He might have had a minor setback. I'm yeah, sure yeah, he was he, he, supposed he, to run at some stage. I know the jockey's there. been booked for six months anyway. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So this is like on the radar for six months. I do think he's a very likely winner. Now. From my own point of view, I'd like to be winning going into that race before I'd have anything on him. Though I would mm. not back him to get my money back. If you know, what I mean? if, I having, mm. if I was having a bad day, there's no way I'd empty for him two to one. I do think he'll win. I wouldn't oppose him, um, but he is tight enough at the same time. He is tight in, in a twenty runner race where they usually stack up or over by the four or five four long pole there. Then you need a small bit of luck and running, and he'd be probably finishing down the outside. Look, I think he'll win, but I ain't probably won't back him. 
Ali, you caught me either. Yeah, in the dying few seconds of Finders Keepers, we have a late winner. You're Asama joking. from Manchester. Was the time over, though? Was oh, it over? Then maybe a steward's inquiry, but I think it's pretty <laughs> safe at the moment. He's withdrawn the cash anyway, so. <laughs> Good he's, man, he's, Asama. Yeah, Asama. 5,000 quid. 5,000 quid is his, yep. Okay, 5,000 quid for Asama. Very well done. Spend it wisely. Bring on the night. Uh, have you got a, 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 a thought on the Ascot Stakes? Bring on the night. Yes? Yeah, dull, but. Nothing dull about it. A 2 to 1 winner is glorious. It, it could be a good day for Willie Mullins. He's got Vauban coming up as well. Absolutely. So you'll see our selections there on your screen for the Ascot Stakes at 5 o'clock. It is two votes for Bring on the Night for myself and Johnny, and two votes for Calling the Wind for Keels and Matt Williams. Currently a 9 to 1 shot, they think. It's a cracking each way price. That is the Ascot Stakes moving swiftly on to the Wolferton Stakes, which is due off at 5.35. And this has been the big plunge horse in the last 24 hours. It is Buckaroo, who's currently 7-2 for Joseph O'Brien. Saga is 9-2. Bolshai Ballet 11-2 with Francesco Clemente. And it is 8-1 King of Conquest, 8-1 uh, Cadillac and 12-1 Poker Face. Now, Keels, you've been rabbiting on about this horse for the last three, four, five days. You are utterly convinced there is a bet in this race. Yeah, I, I thought Francesco Clemente deserved to be favourite and was favourite anti-post. And then uh, uh, and then the jockey bookings came out and Frank is on Saga and not Francesco Clemente. I'm, I'm absolutely convinced it's just because Saga is owned by the King. I mean, uh, nobody in their right mind would choose them on four, would choose him on form. And I don't understand why he's that price. He won one race from 10 starts, uh, two to five shot in September last year. He's got beat chinned at two, under two to one three times since. Uh, and Francesco Clemente would be unbeaten if he hadn't blown the um, bend at Goodwood last time. He was very free that day. Uh, and and he, he, he was three out of three before that. He travelled like the best horse in the race. Just got chinned by King of Conquest. He's the you know he's, he's one of the joint highest rated horses in the field. He's the only one that's of those at the top end of the ratings that isn't carrying a penalty. Uh, I think he's got a great chance, yeah. That was glorious, wasn't it? That was a real compelling case made. You really believe in this horse? Yeah, I think it's, I, I do think he's got a great chance. One of the most likely raced horses in the field as well, with with some of the best form. So you know, there's more to come from him. I can understand the case for Buckaroo, because obviously he's been running in, in Group One company, and it's a big drop in class. Uh, but I thought Francesco Clemente was the one. Eleven to two shot Francesco Clemente for Paul Keeley in the Wolferton. Johnny Deneen, what's your fancy? Um, Tough race, this is no good race too. Um, I've a good message for Boyle Shy Ballet. Um, good message? Yeah. What would that entail? Like, What would you mean be told? I think, is it running off 99, is it? Is it, uh, no, it's a list, uh, it is a handicap. No, it's not, it's listed, but no, it's, it's, it's not a handicap anymore, is it? It's only rating, I'm not even sure now, but I know it's working real well. Mm. And it's, it's nice defensive. Doesn't have a penalty. Trip wise, though, it's on the sharp side. Listen, I'm only passing on what I'm telling you. I've been told, I don't know a lot about it, but I'm told they do, do, they do think it's a big, big runner anyway. Okay, well, how was it, a good run the last day? I don't know much about <laughs> the horse, to be honest. But I, I, I can tell you... Believe your ears, Johnny. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, look, I, I might back him, though. I don't think I probably will. Yeah. But I, I know they think he'll run real well anyway. Okay, so Balshai Ballet, he's got a very strong word for that. I, I, I know, from my little knowledge of the race, I'd be against Saga myself, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a bit of a... You'd have to lay him a lot bigger on exchanges, man. Yeah. Who, Saga, is it? Yeah. Is he he's he's a twice, isn't he? 9.4. I think so, I yeah. I trust him in yeah, the face Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I wouldn't be gone on him anyway, you know what I mean? But uh, I, look, I, I might... Of small bit in Bolshoi Ballet, that's all. No, just on what I've been told, that's all more than anything else. So there you go, folks. The word is good coming out of Bally Doyle about Bolshoi Ballet. Now, 11 to 2 was as big as 8 to 1 yesterday, so that is very interesting. Bolshoi Ballet, 11 to 2. Maddie? I need to find more than one shot of this race. It's really tough. So I'm with Keels with Francesco, and I like Poker Face, 12 to 1, good price. Um, asked to make or race on the pace last time. Mm. That's not the way he wants to do it. He wants to be behind, niggled along, and just staying on. I think he's a big price, 12 to 1. Dead competitive race. Um, Bolshoi Bali had a big bet on him for the derby. He's disappointing. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I haven't forgiven him. Still burned. That was the year that Aiden just ran one, wasn't it? He only ran Bolshoi yeah. Bali. Yeah. Did he win a dead in sound? He That's did, yeah. Right. I, I mean, he Bally sacks and Darren I couldn't sound. have him beaten the derby. I just couldn't believe how bad he ran it. He got an injury, I think, in the race. Mm. Struck into himself or something. And, and he, he run bad a few times after that too. He went to he? America. Yeah, yeah. He ran. I don't know whether he won or got beat. He, well, he was one of the two, wasn't he? He ran desperate one night <laughs> in America anyway, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you are correct, Matt. <laughs> yeah. He either won or he got beat yeah. in America. But yeah. I just thought that when I seen him in America, I thought he just slow. You know, and the point Johnny made about him with the trip, I just I think he might be too slow for this. Okay, yeah. interesting. But uh, poker face at twelve to one, you think is a little bit of value? Yeah, I do. Yeah. 
Uh, the one that I thought was probably too big of a price was Highland Avenue, who I think is crying out for a step back up to a mile and a quarter. Has a good draw on the inside, just gets a little, hopefully will get a little bit of cover. Um, I think he's a better horse than we saw at Epsom last time. And uh, I just thought at 20 to 1, he was potentially a little bit of value in the Wolferton. The finale, race 7 on day 1 of Royal Ascot. It is the Copper House Handicap. And it sees your former Triumph Hurdle winner and champion Hurdle Fort. It is Vauban, currently your 11 to 8 favourite. Ruling Dynasty is 4 to 1. Absurd! Some of the tips on the show this morning is 13 to 2. Chillingham is 11 to 1. Postilio is 12 to 1. And a big drifter is Point King, Paul Keeley, out to 14 to 1. Yeah, I, I couldn't really see that. It was 8, it was eight yesterday afternoon. Um, I still like him. I don't, I don't worry. I don't worry about drifts when it comes to big What races. do you always tell me? Add more on. What happened when Aramax won the, the, the Fred Winter? Aramax won the Fred Winter. Drifted out to 14s at one stage. Yeah, I yeah. put some more on for you, didn't I? Yeah, you there did. You go. <laughs> so uh, it, it does work. Now, no, I mean, it, at the top level, right, you know, it is simple market forces. Now, Vorban has obviously been extremely, extremely well backed, and you can understand why, and he might, he might even be backed even more now we've had this rain. Now, one of your best mates is Joe Chambers, okay? Yeah. Very closely attached to Rich Ritchie, of course, as racing manager. What is Joe Chambers telling you about Vauban? Oh, he'll win. <laughs> but I can't back horses at that price on a round track in, in handicaps. Um, I ask her, it's just, you know, there's going to be trouble for some horses in the race, and who says it's not going to be for the ones that are short prices? Uh, you know, Vauban can obviously win. He's a 160 rated hurdler running off 101. He's got a, he's got a massive chance, but I'll, I'll always have an each way bet on something else. It's just, not, it's just, you know, it's just the way I punt. Uh, and I thought Point King ran a perfectly, perfectly good race with him, just getting chinned. Uh, last time, slow gallop a little bit against him. He got outpaced, ran on really strongly. Just got just got nutted on the line uh, in decent company. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll still back him. Johnny Deneen, River Tiber has won the Coventry. Caldine has won the the St James's Palace Stakes. Bring on the Night has won the Ascot Stakes. You are riding the crest of the wave going into the Copper House Handicap. Do you get rightly stuck in to Vauban? Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll be laying it for whatever I'll be winning in here if I'm in front. I don't okay. fancy Vauban at all in here. Oh, no. oh, you're going the other no, way. I think it's a horrendous price, Vauban, 11 to 8 or 6 to 4. But the rain probably helping a bit, all right, yeah. But Vauban for me is, is, is a ridiculous price. I, I don't Why? Know, I don't rate Vauban in here for starters. I think he's an overrated horse. I think his farm as a four-year-old hurdler is, is proven to be only Pretty average. Beating Pie Piper and Fildor. Yeah, Pie Piper ran in that two mile four race last year. Didn't he? That handicap. He was unlucky. Yeah, he was not unlucky. He was not at all. I don't he think he was, was unlucky. <laughs> he was unlucky. He ran in the race. You're joking me. He wasn't unlucky. <laughs> he ran well. <laughs> he ran all right. Do you know what I mean? But this guy, to me, uh, Ruby Walsh said something I was at. It was interesting. He, I was asking him about Ascot and the horses that are going to Ascot, and, and he said, he said, if they're trained for Ascot. D d that's, that's the so like back bring on the night exactly yeah. but w where you run one through the winter over the jumps and then they appear in Ascot it's a different story altogether they, they, they have to rev them up again and Vauban's going to be revved up again here he's had, had to be revved up for Champion Hurdle and in Punchestown where he had a real go off a statement like he was still only second in the two horse race in my eyes anyway. there was only two horses in that race look maybe he'll win I'd be inclined to have a go off him at 6-4 and, and if favourites had to win here I think I agree with Paul I think he'd even be short in 11-8 or 6-4 mm. especially if bring on the nights after winning you know what I mean because mm. I think if bring on the night wins this will definitely definitely be shorter because they think Mullins will win whatever race he runs a horse in that, that kind but of way. win, lose or draw going into this race you'll be laying Vauban oh without a doubt yeah without a doubt and the, the more I'm in front the more I'll be laying it for is is the two biggest races of the day for you River Tiber and the Coventry and laying Vauban River Tiber Chaldean I won't want Chaldean and uh, Paddington to get beat the two of them they want, I don't want a result in that and I don't want to, I want, I'll want this beat they're my three races anyway yeah uh, are you in the same camp are you taking on Vauban no I'm total polar opposite I think he's a good thing uh, 101 he came in late with his mark um, but if you look at his French form, he won a soft list of, list of race over a mile and a half. I don't mind his hurdling form. I think Mullins is quite easy on them in that second season after the triumph. Yeah. I reckon his form will step up next year and he'll be a proper champion of loss. I, I like him. One of one's a gift. Okay. In this company, I think it's a weak, weak enough race. I don't mind it. You okay? You, know, it's me against you haven't read the <laughs> we, we should have done uh, the race, uh, Matt against uh, Johnny, I think. Uh, uh, are you having more reservations now that a shrewd judge like Matt Williams? Yeah, look, uh, look, look, everyone's going to have an opinion anyway. And uh, look, 
if I'm having a bad day, I might lay it at all. You know what I mean? Okay. But it's not depending on how I'm doing. But if, but I, I kind of bet like that, but other people don't. I'd bet on how I'm doing on a given day. If I feel I'm, 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 I'm rolling, I'll have a go. And if I'm having a bad day, I might just walk away from it. Do you know that kind of way? Okay, okay. So stay tuned. It'll be interesting at five past six to see what Johnny Deneen is going oh, to do. Otherwise, we'll find it hard to walk away from this for yeah. at the same time. Yeah. I mean? oh. And, and Plenty clever for little fancy. A lot of people do well, fancy. There's one next to you. I know, exactly. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So those are our selections. I thought Gassy was too big of a price. Start a favour for last year's Ebor off a £2 higher mark. It's been dropped £2. The rain is going to be fine for Gassy. Just thought in a, in a race where if you are taking on Vauban, there is a little bit of value. I thought he was the value. And uh, Johnny, you're down for charming thoughts here. Chasing thunder. Chase, charging, chasing thunder. Charging sorry. Thunder, yeah, yeah. Charging thunder. Look, is that your selection? I, look, I won't be. I won't be too bushed. What finishes in front of four men? <laughs> Johnny is laying Vauban. Matt is backing Vauban. I thought Gassy each way was the was the bet. And Keels, you are with Point King. Oh, yeah. So we have anything you like in that alley? Point King. Yeah, Keels has already. Um, given his, his thoughts on that. Yeah, I liked him yesterday. Drift is a bit of a concern. Yeah, very strange drift on Point King. Now it's time for the naps, our charity bets, where Paddy Power are kindly donating 50 quid, which will go to charity if it wins. So we need a charity and we need a selection. So the best bet on day one of Right Ascot. I'll kick off proceedings. I'm going to keep it simple. I want to get my nap up every day. See, can I get five in a row? So I'm going to keep it simple. Bring on the night. He just wins the Ascot stakes. 50 quid. Two to one, happy days. And I will go for Pieta House as my charity. Keels? Uh, I will go for, because it's a bigger price than it's a charity, but Francesco Clemente uh, over Highfield Princess. 11 to two, Francesco Clemente for Keels. It's in the Wolferton. Johnny Deneen? I'll go for River Tiber. River okay. Tiber, yeah, I'll go for him. It's your charity? Oh, sorry, Great Ormond Street. Charity, Johnny? Uh, BDSP. Brilliant. Uh, Matt, your charity bet? Um, can I have a double? You can have whatever you want. I'll go River Tiber and I'll go Vauban. River Tiber and, and Vauban. And if Vauban wins, I'll give Johnny a little shove. Because <laughs> <laughs> he'll need it. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. We're talking about roughly 13 to 2, I think, the double on the two. Yeah, are you happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, okay, there you go. Those are our charity bet naps for day one of Royal Ascot. So that is it, folks. That is your preview of the first day of the best five days of summer. We're going to be back with you every morning for Royal Ascot, where, Ali, we're going to be giving away more cash tomorrow. Get £100,000 or €100,000, wherever you are, every I single day. I prefer the pounds. Oh, yeah, more. <laughs> yeah. Every single day. So, um, yeah, tune in to uh, Good Morning uh, Royal Ascot every day. Uh, another 20 people could find themselves with 5000 quid in their account tomorrow morning. And obviously, Osama, you're watching. Very well done your winner on day one of Finders Keepers, but hopefully we will have more winners tomorrow. Uh, Matt, enjoy today. I will. Thanks for coming on. It's always great no, to have you on board. Thanks for having me. Uh, Johnny, uh, next time we might just invest in uh, a trip to Zara or somewhere for you. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to Oscar this week? No. 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 Today he's ready for top, it. Top out in well, shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As Matt said, it's lucky Johnny has lovely tanned legs yeah. for the shorts anyway. With the odd scar knocked in. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Game of hell and <laughs> Keel, the very best of luck. Busy week for you this week? Yeah, extremely busy. Uh, i got tomorrow morning off, but uh, the rest of it in for the rest of you'll it. Be, you'll be back. You'll be sick of us by the end of the week. So that is day one of Good Morning Royal Ascot. We'll be back with you, same place, same time tomorrow, half eight to half nine. Good morning, Royal Ascot. I've been David Jennings. They have been my brilliant panel. Thanks for watching. Join us tomorrow.